y'all, it's Hope from Crafty Hope here and welcome. I'm about to start working, I think, on week five of the Mixed Media Scavenger Hunt Challenge that is Seek, Gather, Create. I'll have the information and the host and everything below. I'm going to move this because it's messing with the light. Um, but basically there are five prompts that you have to work with that are given out by the hosts and this week i've got four other the other four weeks for this summer 2022 i'll link to a couple of them or whatever at least the last one um anyway the five things first thing is paint blobs and i've wrestled with that a little bit today and we're gonna see what happens I'm, i may just take some paint and blob it on to onto my surface we'll see the other thing is a bird so I found I just happened to have this little piece of scrapbook paper laying around with that little bird on a wire and then I've got these stamps that I really like that have a couple different birds on them so there's a bird um, something with holes my first initial thing I thought was this drywall joint tape um, Lisa just used some in her video the other day, I guess last week, um, that I had sent to her. So that was the first thing I thought of. But I also, um, while I was pawing through stuff, found this. I don't know if you can even see that. This is some paper that I have that I got, like, at, I don't know, somewhere. It's a Heidi Swap thing. So it's got holes in it. But then I started thinking about some of my rusty bits and dug through it and found this. I don't know if you can see all the holes in it. Um, and this little rusty piece has got, see, of course, one big hole and lots of other little holes. And I think it would be really neat on like a picture like this. So I may stitch it onto this picture. That's, that's my initial thought. We're going to see. Um, so that's something with holes and then tape. That's easy enough. First off, I've got that drywall joint tape if I want to use it. And I've got masking tape and tissue tape and washi tape and paper tape. This is just medical paper tape. So I'm sure I can get tape in here somehow. And squares. So uh, that is plural. So I'm guessing more than one square. So I've got this stencil that's got a bunch of squares in it. Um... I also decided to cut down an eraser and make a stamp that's a square. So it's mostly square. It's not perfect. And then I think my substrate is going to be this wood square that I, you know, we're going to have fun. I think, I don't know, there was a seat gather crate maybe last season that I used one of these same squares, but it may have been something else. I don't remember. Anyway, that's what we're going with. So I'm going to get started on this. See what make, see if I can get all five of these onto this little substrate with all the ideas that I have. We'll see. It could be a big mess. It could be awesome. We'll find out. Stay tuned. All right, so I thought I was going to start with the fluid gel medium to do this collage. I end up switching over to just regular matte gel the wood was really soaking in that fluid so I'm just gonna put down some collage starting with um, a bunch of different ephemera and book pages and just stuff out of my pile I've sped this up quite a bit because it took me a little while to cover this whole little wooden square it's only four and a half by four and a half inches but I yeah it, it took me a little while because I don't know I don't know this um, whole project probably took me ooh, just over an hour. I did have to break it up um, into two days. Um, I'll tell you where that happens. But I am super happy with how this came together in the end. It's, yeah, it, I don't know. I think bringing in some of my rusty things here like I'm going to do really gives it more of that assemblage flair that I like with things. So sometimes I like to break out of just working in a journal and work on things that can be hung or um, set out or something. You'll see some of my other assemblage stuff within my channel feed if you want, if you're interested in that. So I think I'm getting here to the last couple of papery collage elements I'm adding in here. I'm just trying to fill up some of that open space. So 
Um, and I, there's a couple spots in here where I'm just playing and I completely forgot I was supposed to be putting in some of those prompt elements and I have to come back and do them. So yeah, we'll get to that. So I've got these things down and decide to go ahead and use that drywall joint tape. So that's both tape and something with holes in it. And I'm going to put it just down in a couple of spots. And then I think I'm going to grab it to that, that odd paper stuff that I have. I've got the one that's got more holes in it. And I'm going to tear it down and again use the matte gel medium to apply it onto this collage surface. So it's super neat, y'all. I'm going to have to remember to use that a bit more. It was one of those things I completely forgot that I had. So, yeah. That's going to go down in a couple spots as well. And I don't remember what I did next. We're going to get to it. Like I said, this is a whole experimental thing. And I brought all of these prompts in, I think, in several different ways. So it definitely meets the criteria, but it took it took a little while to do it. I'm, I'm really happy I was able to get this video down to 21 minutes long. So I was afraid that wasn't going to happen. All right, so I have all of those elements down, and then, yeah, I realized, oh, shoot, I meant when I put all the paper elements down to put that bird in there, and so, yeah, I've got to stick my bird in here. Uh, I was trying to figure out where to put it, but because the bottom of it is still straight edge, I like to put the straight edges on the straight edges of of my collage if that makes sense like if there's a straight edge it just makes sense to put it where there's another straight edge because I prefer the torn edges in the middle to be more organic so yeah so I got that that bird down and it's I'm really surprised that I actually um she stays visible throughout the whole thing so I dried that real quick just to get some of the the stickiness off and I'm going to trim just using scissors trim some of the overflow off and then I'm going to grab a piece of um, sandpaper and just get anything else that's that might be dangling off of there so yeah grab that and just go around the edges now I did sand that wood piece off camera before I started this whole video all the edges the front and the back with a sanding block just to make sure there wasn't anything um I don't know prickly on it <laughs> no no um splinters oh my gosh where are my words all right so once that's there I grab this Lucas acrylic paint and fern and I'm gonna put that down and it it wasn't shook up real well so I'm gonna mix it and I thought I was gonna go ahead and use my stencil but it was there that I was like, oh no, I haven't put any, any of my washi tapes that I've pulled out. So I'm going to put a couple little pieces of this Tim Holtz, um, what is it called, design tape. And then this is Tim Holtz uh, tissue tape that I love. And I'm going to put it all over this. Any of the open spaces that are on here that need a little something, I'm putting this design tape down. <laughs> I love it. I mean, not design tape, tissue tape. So yeah, it's getting down and, and I have to say I do prefer that over the design tape because the design tape tends to be uh, like a shiny surface and nothing really sticks to it. So yeah, um, I have that problem here in just a little bit. But So I've got several of my prompts here now, <laughs> not all of them. Um, I still need paint blobs and squares so here I'm bringing in my squares and I'm using that fern paint and this stencil y'all I don't know who this stencil is by I mean I might be able to take a look at it and see but I don't know um it ends up this fern is really light it is so hard to see on here that I'll end up bringing squares in again later but squares in general don't really show up except for the fact that my substrate here is square and the picture that I'm using is square. Those are going to be the most obvious squares in the end of this. So just going to tell y'all that. <laughs> so I decided to distress this a little with some coffee. I kept wanting to maybe put gesso on here to bring all of those papers together, but I decided instead to bring in the coffee. So I'm, I've got it pretty dark here, but do you see how the the up there at the top where I've got that design tape, the coffee is not sticking to it. It's just running right off of it. But it's fine because it's kind of the same color as the coffee. And so it works its its way in. 
but I'm getting this all over, letting, kind of alternating between putting the coffee and adding a little water to my brush to move it around. So now that that is good and wet, um, I'm not real sure what I'm doing. Oh, I decided to move it around a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and dry this real quick. And then what do I come in with? I grab, since I knew I was going to put that rusty bit on my page, I've got this rusty hinge distress oxide and I've got that piece of eraser that I cut into a square that I am stamping on to this substrate just to both bring square in and a little bit of a rusty feel onto the actual thing. Now, one of the things I love to do with the Distress Oxides is, especially with stamps, is to blur them out a little. So I'm not really keeping the square shape with all of these. Um, it's there again. Like I said, I've got other square things on here. It just isn't an obvious thing in the, when it comes down to it with this. So I was more interested in getting that rusty feel on here than actually having the squares. I know I'm awful. I'm awful. So, and then I'm going to do some splatter. I've got a piece of acetate that I put that rusty hinge distress oxide onto. I got to add some more and do a little bit of splatter. And it made some really neat marks. I hope you can see in my detail shots at the end where it got into the coffee and everything. It was really kind of neat. So I'm splattered and splattered and I guess it's probably time to dry again. <laughs> yep. And now we're going to work with paint blob and I decided to do, this is something I do all the time y'all, is do these finger dots. So they're basically just paint blobs, is that, was that the, yeah, and that's how I'm going to go about this. I'm using sea glass um, Americana acrylic craft paint and just putting, yeah, some, some finger dots that are blobs of paint on my substrate and I leave this to dry. This is where I had to uh, leave the house and go do something with my husband. And so I left that to dry, hoping that some of the texture would come about in those paint blobs and it, it did all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that little, whatever, that uh, phalange, I don't know what this thing is, that rusty bit, but glue it down to the photo with some E6000 just so it doesn't move when I go to bring in my embroidery floss portion of this. So I left that to dry and I'm coming back and I found some embroidery floss that matches that sea glass paint pretty well. And I've gone ahead and put it onto a needle and tied a knot. And I made sure too that the needle I picked out had a pretty small width to it because um, some of those little holes that I'm tying, sewing through are really tiny so I didn't want to have a problem going through it and I'm just doing this kind of decorative thing where I'm fanning out from that one hole with three stitches so it's a neat little fanish effect and I'm going to do that on all four of the tiny holes that are around this and you can see I'm pre-punching these so that I know when I flip the back over where I want my next uh, stitch to go through so that's just the easiest way for me to do that to pre-punch it and then go through I've sped this up a little bit because I'm just repeating the same thing on all four of these holes so I'm pre-punching and then going through and making a stitch and then I'm gonna pre-punch and go through and then go back through that center and I'm just doing this over and over I think this adds I don't know there's a lot of texture that's come with that little rusty thing but this bit of the embroidery floss kind of helps soften that up a little I think and give it I don't know a little bit of a flair to it I like it I think it's awesome so I'm going to tie this off on the back yet. I was thinking it was going to be glued down. You'll see in a little bit how I end up attaching this to my, um, I don't even know, my wall hanging. Oh, I bumped the camera there. So I decided that since there was so much white on that, white and black in that photo, I wanted to bring a little more white and black into my art piece here. So I've got a cheap pen from the Dollar Tree and I am just doing some really sketchy circles around my my paint blobs just yeah to get some of that black on there and then I've pulled out some Liquitex acrylic ink and in white and I'll do some splatters on top of all of this just oh but the wait 
Is that the next thing? I, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then we've got one more. Yeah, we'll get to all of it. This was a, like I said, it was a two-day process for me. It took over an hour. But I, y'all, the results of this are so yummy. I'm, I am beyond pleased with this. I hope y'all are too. Let me know if, if you have any questions or, I don't know, any problems with what I did. All right, so I'm putting that white splatter all over this kind of turning it and making sure I'm getting it exactly where I want it because I wanted that you know that black and that white like the photo on here so I'm gonna dry it and I decided to do something with the edges of this because that will be visible once it's hung so I'm just using that rusty hinge distress oxide going over the edges and then I'm gonna grab my wet paintbrush and just kind of let it um, cover the edges do you see how that's painted out a little bit so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And I might come back later and seal that with something, some kind of um, varnish, because I know that that uh, distress oxide could move. So I'm gonna dry that again real quick. And then I'm gonna start thinking about my um, wall hanging. So I've got a couple, these are just some little hand drills that I'm going to drill into each corner. I'm just showing you that I'm doing it. I'm not gonna make y'all watch me drill into these, but I did the two top corners of this using that hand drill. And then I'm coming back with, this is, it is really actually decorative, but it's rusted wire. I think Tiffany Goff Smith had some that she used and I, yeah, I had to get it. So I won't ever use this in like my jewelry making or anything, but I thought it was kind of perfect for this. So I got like a really long length of it and I'm going through the front of both of the holes, as you can see, and then I'm going to pull the wire down to about the size of the hanger that I want at the top of this. And working on one side, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of secure the wire there on one side by wrapping the wire around just above the, the hole, just above the, the art piece. And then I'll go to the other side and do kind of the same thing, wrap that wire around one time. But because this wire is super thin and kind of flimsy, I want to, I don't know, infor reinforce it. So I'm wrapping all the way around one side, as you can see, and I've sped this up quite a bit. <laughs> and I'm wrapping it not really concisely, just bulking it up a little bit and then I used the wire on the other side and went back over and I'm leaving a tail on either side because I want to make sure I secure that really well yeah I'm sorry I sped this way up y'all and because it's just going around it all right and so now I'm at the end and I am just going to wrap that little tail around three or four times and then trim it with my wire cutters and kind of do the same thing on the other side do secure it just above that and then do that now I'm going to grab some flat nose pliers and just flatten down where that little bit of wire is sticking up so it's there's nothing pokey there and that's it I've done that in a bunch of different things it's super easy now I decided to because I thought I was going to use matte gel to put down that picture and then I thought oh well, maybe I'll use some foam tape and I was like no I don't really want the dimension on it so I was like, oh, just some double-sided tape would be great. So I'm putting down double-sided tape um, around the outside edges of this. And again, this brings tape into it again. So hey, hey, that's that prompt again. I've got all kinds of tape going on in there. So, and I'm not going to make y'all watch me peel up this. I just wanted you to see how uh, that I put it down over almost all of those outside edges and didn't worry about the inside of this. And so then I'm just going to kind of scratch until I can get the backs of this tape up and then peel it. So I did that for all four of them. And I'm going to position my, um, my little photo with the little flange on it, trying to make sure exactly where I want it and before I stuck it. Because I knew once I stuck it, it was stuck. <laughs> and so I'm going to take a good look at it, make sure it's even, and then press down all those sides yep and it's on there and so for my last little thing I'm gonna bring in my Tim Holtz small talk stickers and found the phrase the journey is the destination which I thought was absolutely perfect for this picture of this lady standing in front of her car in the middle of just the road because it doesn't look like 
I don't know that she's anywhere in particular. She's just in the road in front of her car. <laughs> so I love this. I want you to go check out the, um, the host for this. I'll have their links below for you to, to see what they've done. Make sure you click that hashtag seek, gather, create, and, um, let me know if you're playing along with this. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming by. I'm watching and I will see y'all later. Bye.